Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. And welcome back to my shop. So I know many of you this week are expecting to see me finish all the 3D printed parts for the tachometer input on uh, touch DRO on my lathe. And unfortunately, I can't show this to you yet for three different reasons. Reason number one, there is actually a bug or an issue with the hardware that I have for touch DRO that is causing not the RPM input, not the tachometer input not to work, but to some reason causing it to not apply it to the feed rate on the axis. And I really want to show that to you guys. I'm, I'm working with the author of touch DRO to figure that out. And hopefully we'll have that figured out by next Friday. Reason number two, it's not done yet. I haven't been here all week. Uh, once a year, I go out with two of my best friends and we ride dirt bikes in the woods and just have a blast. And uh, I thought maybe I could get it done uh, today or uh, I started on it last weekend. I just, I just didn't get it done. It's not done. And reason number three, after seeing last week's video, someone reached out to me and said, hey, I think I can help with this. Well, let me send you something. And they sent it, it's here, but I can't show you this yet either. So unfortunately, we're just gonna have to wait till next week uh, to wrap that up. I do of course have something I wanna show you guys this week. And in fact, actually I have 10 different things that I wanna show you guys. And all 10 of them are outdoor prints. They're all things that over time I have printed out that have lived outside and I wanna see how they're doing. And I wanna do this because I'm pretty active in all the different 3D printing subreddits. Uh, the various 3D printing Facebook groups. And one thing that I see come up all the time is people talking about what you can and can't do for outdoor prints. And I'm not ready to call a lot of the things I see a myth. I think it really depends on the specific filament that you use, but I've had really good luck with outdoor prints in comparison to most people, apparently. So I wanna actually take a look at all the different things. Like I said, I've got 10 of them that over the years I've 3D printed and put outside. And the oldest one we're gonna look at has been outside for seven years continuously in the sun. And I'm not gonna tell you what kind of condition it's in. It's gonna to have to hang out, watch the video, we'll take a look at it. Uh, but we're gonna start with the stuff that's been outside for the shortest amount of time. And what I've actually got here on the bench is one that I would consider eh, kind of a fail. I mean, not really, but you'll see what I mean. So, uh, if you weren't able to guess, this guy did not start out curved like this. It was flat. Uh, I made these for my wife for underneath the tomato plants in our garden, I think last summer. And it was the, the plants were drooping down, the tomatoes were resting on the soil. We didn't want them to rot. So I printed up three of these. I just designed them real quick and put these underneath the tomatoes and they definitely warped in the sun. This was plain old Sunlu PLA and on a hot day, or probably over the course of a couple different hot days. Yeah, these guys warped pretty bad. And PLA in the sun will do this. If you have something that is under constant stress, that is made from PLA, and you leave it in a hot car, or you leave it outside in the sun, this is what's going to happen to it. Now, I don't think this has gotten brittle at all. Let's see. I don't really need these, so let's actually just break one. Yeah. That has not gotten brittle at all. This is the same as it was when I printed it. I actually took a fair amount of force to break that guy off. So now this has only been outside since last summer, so not even quite one full year. But I think this fared pretty well from a like a, the material holding up to, to UV, but yeah, it warped. All right, let's go take a look at the next one. Okay, the next one is these end covers for these rails underneath my mini split outside. And these, these were actually a video that we did right here on the channel. These are Hatchbox Gray PLA, and they look totally fine. Yeah, I don't, usually when stuff goes brittle, I can actually kind of mark it up with my fingernail or even just bending it a little bit, it'll snap right off. Now, these have been outside for, I think around a year. These might not quite be at the one year mark either, so not a ton of time outside, but they are doing totally fine, and I don't see any warping. And I wouldn't expect to because these guys are not really under any constant tension or any kind of heavy load. They're just end caps and works totally fine. By the way, all the different filaments and designs that we take a look at today, you'll be able to find down in the description of the video. So this gray Hatchbox PLA, I will link that in the description of this video. And I'll also link to any of the videos that I did in designing these things. And I'll also link to my site, fpfdesigns.com, where you can get all the STLs for everything we're looking at for free. Even if I didn't feature them in a previous video, I'll dig up the STLs and I'll make sure that they are 
uh, linked in the page for today's video. Okay, the next one is out here on the outside of my house, and I did do a video on this. This was around Christmas last year. So this has been outside for, I don't know, around six months. I think I did it towards the beginning of December last year. And this is also Hatchbox PLA, and it has warped a little bit, but otherwise is in great shape. If I look at sort of the front here, I can see that it is not quite straight anymore. And particularly if I look at the back here, I can see it has warped a little bit. Now this guy does get a lot of sun, so I can, I'm not surprised that it has warped a little bit. If I did this out of another material, it probably would not have warped, but it hasn't affected the functionality of it. Like it's still tight here, this slips over the outlet. Got the beginning of a wasp nest in there as well. But uh, you can see it basically just locks over the outlet. There is a video on this. I'll link to that down in the description below. But I would consider this guy doing just fine. And yes, I still have these Christmas lights up. I'm aware it's May. Feel free to still let me know down in the comments if you want. But it just I'm just preparing for next Christmas. Early. Okay, for this next one, we're jumping right to four years. And... It is these little hooks here, or stakes, I guess, that hold down the soaker hose in our little raised bed garden behind the house. And this is not my design, but I will find it and link to it down in the description of this video as well. And um, I have not checked these ahead of time. Let's see how they're doing. So it's really, the, the bottom part was buried in the ground. Um, it's the top part that was exposed to the sun. And let's just try bending it. Yeah, it's totally fine. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. It is maybe, maybe a little faded at the top. It's hard to tell. And unfortunately, I don't remember if this was Hatchbox PLA or Sunlu PLA, but it is definitely uh, just plain old PLA. Okay, up next and also at the four year mark is a bunch of parts that I made for this dump trailer. And on the back here, this is a two part one. There is a piece down here and a guide piece up here that just holds these fiberglass rods into the back. And the reason for that is I can't see the back of this trailer when I am backing it up. So I added these guys just so I could see and they're actually reflective on the top. These are driveway stakes. These are those things they sell at like Lowe's and Home Depot or whatever the equivalent to that home center is if you're somewhere in Europe. Uh, that you're meant to just stick in your driveway someplace so that you can see at night. And it slips nice and tight into these, and these are printed out of Sane Smart TPU. And it does look a little bit faded. Like it looks, it's just not quite as black as it was when I printed it, but it is holding up just fine. You can see it flexing there underneath the screws. I don't think it has lost anything at all. Same thing for the bottom one. And I also 3D printed these bumpers down here. So these, this is like stake body sides. They just drop into pockets on the side of the trailer. And to keep the whole thing from um, bumping down against this paint, it sits up off of here with these TPU bumpers. These are a different color. These didn't fade. These were the gray uh, Sane Smart TPU. There's one here, there's one here, and there is one here. And if I lift up the stake body side, you can see there's actually holes right there in the bottom of it for two screws to hold it in place, but the screw heads don't actually contact the, uh, the bed of the trailer or the side of the trailer. So it does a pretty good job protecting the paint and it dampens this when it slams down as well. Okay, next up and at a whopping five years outside is this TPU patch that I made for my wife's bumper. This is for our Toyota Highlander and uh, she hit a stick that actually went right through the bumper. Obviously it didn't make a perfectly rectangular hole like that. I trimmed that out um, and then made this patch. And I did a video on this. The video is not five years old because I covered this well after I actually did the patch for this, but I'll link to this video down in the description as well. And this guy is holding up amazingly well. It's hard to see how shiny it is because the car's pretty dirty but I printed this this face down on Kapton tape over a steel sheet and I covered how I did that in the video. But this is plain old Sane Smart black TPU and honestly it looks really good. I think it's holding up better than the outdoor caulk that I used to, uh, to sort of make the seam here. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people questioned whether it was a good idea to use a uh, 3D print to patch a bumper on a car, but uh, a new bumper cover is pretty expensive, particularly once you have it painted, and uh, that actually blends in better than you would think. I mean, yeah, you see it now because you're looking at it because I'm talking about it in the video, but no one ever notices it. I don't think anyone's ever actually asked what's going on in the bumper of the car. 
Okay, this next one is also at the five year mark. It is also TPU and it's covering a gap that had opened up between the riser conduit coming up with my electric feed into the meter box on the outside of my house. And I did do a video on this. Uh, I'll link that down in the description as well. And this is Sane Smart. It was the gray Sane Smart and it definitely has faded, but it is still flexible. It's still actually really flexible. Um, with no signs of the, the properties of the material changing. So I'm um, calling that one fine as well. Okay, this next one is also at the five year mark and it is also TPU. This is an outdoor trampoline. And this trampoline uh, sits on small concrete pads that I poured with a six by six that basically sets the height. So there's like taller six by sixes on this end and the other end they are trimmed shorter so that the trampoline sits level. And each one of these has a threaded rod that is set down in the concrete, comes up through the six by six. And then this piece and this piece are plain old Sane Smart gray TPU. And it basically sort of adapts uh, the, the flat washer up here uh, to hold this pipe in place without squeezing the pipe or, um, you know, scratching the paint off the pipe. And yeah, still, it's hard to, Hard to see it because these are printed with a good amount of infill, but this is still perfectly flexible. And this piece up here that caps the threaded rod is also TPU. That feels maybe the very top of this. I don't know if it's just dirty or if maybe the UV has gotten to it a little bit. It's still flexible, but it just, it almost feels like it has like a thin layer of paint on it and it doesn't. Um, so maybe the very, very top layer, the UV got to it a little bit, but it's not cracking at all or anything. I mean, it's still holding up really well. And that is five continuous years in the sun. And I'm in the Northeast in the United States. So this sees everything from like 100 degree sunny days to zero degree or maybe even as low as like negative two or negative three degrees Fahrenheit in the winter here. So uh, this stuff is holding up really well. Okay, this next one comes in at the six year mark it is PLA. It's also really hard to see. And I'm realizing now, even though it's on my list, it's not technically in the sun, I guess. There is small drain holes in the underside of these chairs. And there's one right here. And what was happening was wasps were going into the chairs and making nests. And I basically made little plugs for those holes with a, a much smaller hole in the middle. And let's pull one out. I can get it out. Uh, you know, it's a, they're, they're like a tight fit in there. I made them basically that I kind of held them in place and knocked each one in with a, with a small hammer. So I don't think that's coming out. Uh, but to be fair, I guess this one doesn't really see a lot of sun, only reflected UV. But it's just plain old PLA. And uh, yeah, they're holding up, uh, holding up just fine. Okay, this leaves us with one last print and this one is at the seven year mark. It's so right up here, but before I show it to you, let me show you what's inside here so you understand what's going on. And inside this building is a diesel backup generator. And before you guys light me up down in the comments, I feel like I should probably mention that we are in essentially what is a shed. It is not attached to my house. It is nowhere near my house. So if something goes terribly wrong with my setup here, it is potentially a loss since this building might burn down um, or you know insert other problem here but this is not attached to my house. I mention that because super sad statistic, but every year tons of people die. Um, well, maybe not tons, but more than you would think die in either fires caused by generators running in basements and garages or from asphyxiation from the exhaust. So please don't be dumb and run a generator in your house or your garage or even a building attached to your house. Just don't do it, it's stupid. But we're out here in a shed and the exhaust from this goes out of the manifold into the exhaust pipe, into a piece of flex pipe, into a piece of still flexible, but less flexible uh, exhaust pipe, into a steel elbow, and then through this contraption that I made from various parts that were actually designed to, I think, vent one of those like uh, indoor gas heaters. Um, and then of course this pokes outside. So can you guess what the 3D print is? Yep, it's a cap for that exhaust. And this thing is plain old PLA. It's actually one of the first things I ever designed and 3D printed. And it has been outside. This is the original one. 
It's been outside right here. So full sun for seven years and it is fine. There is nothing wrong with it. Actually, let's take it inside and take a closer look at it and see if that really is the case. Cause it looks fine to me, but let's take a closer look. Okay, we're back here in the shop where we've got much better lighting. And the first thing I'll point out is, I mean, you can see the, the surface of this in comparison to the surface here on the inside. Uh, because this part has not really been in the weather. I mean, it's been in the, the cyclic temperature changes here, but it has not been exposed to the sun. And that pretty much looks the same as these surfaces out here. I mean, these are still shiny. Um, it's not brittle. If I poke this with my fingernail. I mean, I don't know if you can tell from the sound. But again, this guy is plain old PLA. It's hatchbox gray PLA. It's not faded. Um, it's not deteriorated. The, what's going on in the inside here is I didn't print this with supports. I actually just let it bridge across that. It printed down on this face here. Actually seven and a half years. Yeah, it's closer to seven and a half years that this thing has been outside, full sun, exposed to all the elements. So it gets wet all the time, goes through all the seasons, gets, uh, I've seen ice on this thing in the winter and it looks amazingly good. All right, guys, what I would like to hear from you is tell me down in the comments, what things have you 3D printed and put outside? How have they held up and what materials did you use? PLA is probably the one that I hear the most negative things about that, oh yeah, you can't use PLA outside. The thing is, I hear a lot more people saying you can't use PLA outside than I do people saying, yeah, I printed something from PLA and I had it outside and now it's disintegrated. Uh, I actually can't find that many examples of people saying that. I find, again, a lot more examples of people just repeating that, oh, you can't print anything from PLA and put it outside. Well, I beg to differ. Again, seven years on this piece. Now, maybe that's not true of all filaments. Again, let me know down in the comments. Uh, have you printed anything that's been outside for you know, more than a couple of years? Let us know. How long has it been outside? What material did you use? And what kind of condition is it in? Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me for this week's video. Format of this video is a little bit different than what we usually do here on the channel. So if this is your first time here, uh, we generally do a functional print. So I'll take a look at something I have around the shop, around the house or outside that needs to be fixed, needs some improvement or that I want to add some feature to. Uh, we sort of brainstorm what the design's going to be. I design it, print it, install it, show it to you guys and I share everything for free. So for example, um, I'll even put the STL for this on today's video page and that'll be linked um, down in the description below. The site's fpfdesigns.com. In fact, all the things I showed you today, I'll dig up the STLs for each one. I think three or four of them had their own videos in the past, but for the ones that didn't, I'll dig up those STLs and make them available to you guys. I do have one favor to ask you guys, and that is if you enjoyed this video, if you got anything out of it at all, take a second, hit that like button. It costs you nothing except two seconds of your time, and it really helps out the channel. Also gives YouTube a better idea of the stuff that you actually like to see. And if this is your first time here and you want to check out some of my other videos, please do. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.